I picking up on that, uh, Rohan, because uh, a lot of people assume that for innovation, all you need is increase your R&D expenditure and you're done. The country can achieve innovation. So I want to ask you, there are a lot of ingredients that go into innovation. If you can maybe rank them in order or say what's really more important, surely just the expenditure on R&D is not enough. The, like you said, it's about changing mindsets. It's about stimulating creativity. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about those dimensions and which ones are more important than others. So for me, I wouldn't go into a laundry list of things. Of course, there are multiple elements to it. But for me, for innovation, the most important thing is culture. 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 A lot of people mistake it to be R&D. R&D, to be or very honest with you, R&D is just another place where you do development on research. I have not come across a single company who are best known for its innovation saying R&D is where we innovation gets done. For me, it's a culture, the loving people to think out of the box from anywhere at what level you are and being able to get those ideas and implement implementing those ideas without killing them uh, are the most important aspects of creating a company-wise innovation. And for me, innovation has to be a company-wise or a country-wise thing. Do you, do you think that those same lessons, you know, you said uh, giving them the space and environment to yeah. explore yeah. innovation, is that valid only at a company level or how, how is that also valid at a no, country I think, level? I think it's valid for me even as a parent. Now, I have two sons. One of the things I always try not to do intentionally, even at a family level, is when they come up with an idea, uh, even though it may sound very silly or it may sound completely out of the ordinary and impossible, I try not to discourage them saying, oh, that's not the way it is done. No, no, there's a way of doing it. You have to do it like that. And I think for us, it's not just the company. I think even as parents, as members of the society, allowing other people's ideas to flourish and thinking through about what is the basis of that person's thinking like that are really, really important. And I think we are guilty of it because we always tend to think, oh, it has to be done this way, otherwise it's not valid And I think that's something we need to change. I was at a talk uh, a couple of years ago yeah. where this economist, Lord Magnath Desai said, some of the greatest inventions and innovations have come from the Western world because they respect people, you know, yeah. exploring that, not getting chastised yeah. for breaking the rules. Yeah. He said Asians aren't rule breakers. Do you agree with that? Do you think Sri Lankans are rule breakers? Do you think we have the capacity to innovate? Before I answer that question, let me take it this way. There is a research that has been made, and I think I have the stats available with me. It says, from mathematical knowledge, the Asian kids are by far ahead of the Europeans or the American companies. But in terms of confidence, Americans and the European kids are by far way ahead and for us, we as in this part of the world, Indian or subcontinent kids are really, really low. What essentially means is, I think we are getting the kids to think in, in mathematical structured format, but in terms of giving them the confidence to pursue something they, they believe that could be done otherwise, we are not very good at it or we haven't done enough uh, support or we are not given enough support to them. And I think to your question, I agree it's a cultural thing as well. And this is the problem because changing cultural norms, I personally believe we have undue respect for elders too much. That's one of the reasons why some of the times when adults say something, we blindly believe it, we don't even challenge, challenge it. it or say even, this can be, we say, oh yes, that can be done this way. But there's another way of doing it, type of thinking is never allowed. It's cultural pressure. And I think that's wrong. And those are norms that we need to break away if you really want to get our kids, Sri Lankans, to think about it. I believe Sri Lankans are a great nation. I think we, if you look at any great company, there are Sri Lankans working for them, which is a testament to say that we have our intents. But we are just so good at following, still more than creating. And that's the transition I would love to see Sri Lankans take. Great. And uh, my final question, Rohan. Yeah is from all the things you've said it's clear that Sri Lanka needs a step change whether it's in creating a culture, changing mindsets, yeah. uh, driving policy changes, creating more innovative companies. Yeah. Sri Lanka surely is is one of the latecomers to this. There have been other countries that go, have gone before. With your work globally, where can Sri Lanka learn from? What countries have you seen that have managed to really get their 
bag of ingredients right to, to really make a change and drive this innovation agenda. Let me answer this question. Now, this is what create, sometimes surprised me. More often than not, when people tell me, oh, we could be the next, next Singapore, next Malaysia, I always say, why do we want to be the next Malaysia or Singapore? Yes, we, there is a disadvantage of coming into this late, but the upside of that is we have an opportunity now to define something that nobody ever thought of before. And I think that's the thinking that we would like to take. We don't need to be a copycat of another blueprint of another company or something. We can create something which so many other countries could follow and be say, oh my god, we want to be like Sri Lanka and what they did with them. Yes, we missed a lot of buses and thank, hopefully we won't miss anymore. It seems to be that we are still missing few. But the truth of the matter is, but we are in this position where while we take le lessons from the other ones, we could really innovate around where Sri Lanka should be in another five years' time. And I think that's that's a great, exciting thing. I don't think we should take any lessons from anyone. Uh, say that try to benchmark against anyone, that's my word. But we should take lessons from different people and carve out a space for us, which we can do. Because Sri Lanka is unique in every way. And that's my last part of this. Thank you very much, Rohan. That's a great point to end at. My pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us on Talking Thank Economics. Thank you so much.